Good evening on Thursday from the breakfast room in the rectory. I wasn't going to do anything to camera tonight because I felt I didn't have anything particular to say. Uh, but I was reminded just a few moments ago as I missed um, the clap for carers, as I'm afraid I've done uh, nearly every week so far, that actually uh, things may be a little bit different, but there are some things that are staying the same. And I say this because I went through my newsfeed very briefly on uh, my computer in the office and I saw a few things that sort of made my blood boil long before this coronavirus lockdown and things seem to be continuing today which have sort of fallen off my radar slightly because like many of you I suppose I've been too concerned about getting from one end of the day to the next without going completely potty. I say this because many of you will have seen in the international news at the death in police custody of a man called uh, George Floyd, uh, who happened to be a man of colour, who happened to have been uh, under some pressure, literally by a white police person uh, not long before he died. And you will uh, draw certain inferences from what you saw on the television screen, uh, which uh, just shows that um, these apparent injustices continue. And then I also saw on the world section of my news feed that there are still problems going on between the Palestinians in the occupied territories and the Israeli authorities. And I saw a story today about a Palestinian fishermen, uh, apparently, allegedly within their territorial waters, uh, being uh, assaulted by uh, Israeli uh, militia. Now, of course, there'll be two sides to every story. But uh, in my view, and it's only my view, that these things have been running sores for quite long enough in international news for a lot of people not to sit by and tolerate it any longer. And having had some experience of what life is like for Palestinians, uh, I'm, and I mean very limited experience, uh, I know which side I'm inclined to believe. It was also a very long day today with uh, many more meetings on Zoom, uh, local level uh, and uh, diocesan level. And it's quite plain that this thus far relatively brief period in our national and international history is going to leave some scars which are indelible. Things will never be the same again. Uh, the exact effects of this period of uh, confinement and quarantine on the institutional financial, spiritual uh, and day-to-day um, -day life of the Church of England and other Christian denominations remains to be seen. But certainly I get the impression now from people who were doing what I was doing just over 20 years ago in preparing for ordained ministry, the landscape is radically different to perhaps the greatest change in my view over the course of a lifetime in the course of the church's history and by that I also include the Reformation in England. Well I was compelled to say something because I wanted to say it partly because I read through the readings for the the day-to-day -day in the little um, Ascension Tide booklet that uh, you have and uh, it helped my um, blood uh, come down to a slightly more reasonable temperature. And it concerns the readings that are printed in the pamphlet for today. I'm sorry if this spoils your later observance of a Compline or evening prayer or your enjoyment of this little novena, but they spoke to me today. From Ezekiel chapter 11. Through Ezekiel, the Lord promises to restore Israel to give them a heart of flesh instead of a heart of stone, that they may obey him and to be their God and they his people. Well, let's all have hearts of flesh rather than hearts of stone. And this pertains particularly to the authorities that have great power over us as institutions or as individuals representing those institutions. We still need to have hearts that are made of flesh than of stone and we can still enforce and apply the law in a way that respects the human dignity of those upon whom it is being applied. And then the reading from Matthew, Matthew 9, 35 to 10, 20. 
an excerpt. You will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Now we have a lot to think about, don't we, with these extraordinary times that we're managing. And I, I don't know how you're planning to respond with to the news you're going to be able to have a, a barbecue or a party uh, outside for up to six people. Uh, socially distanced, of course. Um, I don't quite know what that means, and certainly, certainly won't apply to me for some considerable time. But please, in your prayers, try to remember that there are those across uh, the world, uh, because of the accent of their skin colour, or the way that they speak, or the religious beliefs that they hold, are subject to unjust behaviour. Uh, behaviour that ruins the image of God that is latent within us. Behaviour that just should remind us that actually we're not uh, different races and ethnicities, but one human race, one humankind made in God's image and caused to grow into God's likeness. And so with the little prayer at the end of the day, Heavenly Father, help us to rely on the inspiration of your Holy Spirit for everything we need and say and do, increase our faith and trust in you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So yes, God gives us all the things that we need, but God doesn't give us those things always at the time that we think we want them, which reminds us to be persistent and consistent and honest in our prayer as we truly examine our lives before God and before the heavenly host. So we just bring this little piece to camera to a close and I will say the daily prayer for the gifts of the Spirit. Dear God, we humbly ask for the gifts of your Holy Spirit, for wisdom, understanding, counsel, courage, knowledge, holiness and reverence. Help us to discern the wonderful gifts with which we have been blessed. May we recognise our potential and never underestimate what we can achieve. May we always discern the presence of the Holy Spirit directing us and guiding us. May we use the gifts that the Spirit offers us to help others who struggle with decisions in their own lives. And may we do all this in love and service to you, O Lord. Amen. So truly may we recognise our potential, recognise the potential we see in others, always look for growth, always yearn for hope because in God we find our trust and we know that our Redeemer lives even in the darkest times. And so may the Holy Spirit of God bless us and preserve us and keep us now and ever. Amen.